Welcome to part five of the photo shoot series. If you haven't seen any of the four previous videos, go watch those now so you know what we've been up to. Now, before we get into editing, we want to talk about one of the cameras we use during the shoot since a lot of you guys asked us about it. Hasselblad recently let us borrow their X1D medium format mirrorless camera. First, this isn't a paid review. No one has paid us. They just let us borrow this camera to try out. So we'll get the cons out of the way first. Now the body itself costs $9,000 and the 45 millimeter lens costs an additional $2,700. So it's pretty inaccessible to most photographers. You could buy almost five Canon 5D Mark IVs for the same price. Coming from shooting Canon 5Ds, we weren't really used to the slower pace workflow of a medium format camera like the X1D. The autofocus is far slower and the lack of a D-pad or multi-selector like the joystick on the back of a 5D makes focusing on your subjects a much more laborious task. So it's definitely better suited for slower paced shoots. Now let's talk about the pros. The X1D has 16-bit color depth, 14 stops of dynamic range, shoots 50 megapixel photos, it's tack sharp. The ergonomics and size of the camera are pretty similar to that of a DSLR. The touchscreen is pretty intuitive. There's focus peaking in the electronic viewfinder to help you manually focus. All of these factors come into play to make the photos look amazing straight out of camera. So during the shoot, we use both the Hasselblad and the Canon in every vignette so we can do side-by-side -side comparisons. Now for the perfect comparison, we could have used the same exact camera settings, but that really wasn't the intent of the shoot. Now that you know what we shot with, Let's head into Lightroom and we'll show you how we created a cinematic edit for these photos. First, we want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring our channel. You might have already heard, but in case you're new around here, they are perfect for blogs, portfolios, online stores, or whatever. They have beautiful designer templates, award-winning 24-7 customer support, and it's an all-in-one platform that's so easy to use, practically anyone can do it. We've used it for three of our websites for the last several years and love it. To get started with your website, save 10%, and support our channel, visit squarespace.com slash mangostreet and use the code mangostreet at checkout. I've imported all my photos into Lightroom and already made my selects. All right, let's start editing. Let's start with this living room shot that we use the Hasselblad X1D for. Since I shot this a little crooked, the first thing I'm going to do is go down to the transform section and click auto. In this case, Lightroom does a great job of straightening things out. The next thing I'm going to do is lift the shadows a lot to bring in some detail in the darker parts of the image. I'm also going to pull the highlights back to around negative 20. Now I'm going to head to the bottom to camera calibration. Each and every pixel has a red, green, and blue value, and making adjustments in the section will affect how each pixel looks. For a quick example, let's look at these color calibration squares. For instance, if I adjust the blue hue, all of the colors are affected. Whereas, if I just adjust the blue hue in the HSL section, only the blues and purple squares are being affected. Basically, the camera calibration section can be an interesting place to start getting the tones you want from your photos. I'm going to start by bringing the shadow tint back toward green. And while their skin tone is looking good, I'm actually going to pull back their red primary saturation to help give this image a more muted feeling. To mute things a little bit more, I'm going to also pull the green primary back to around negative 12. All right, so already with just a few tweaks, we've gotten this photo looking really good. All right, now I'm going to make a small tweak to the tone curve. I'll add a center point and then two more points equidistant apart in the shadows. Now I'll slightly lift the black point. I'll bring the next point down a little and then barely raise the next point. I'm losing a lot of detail in the blacks, so I'm going to lift that to 50. I'm also going to raise the exposure by 0.3. As we mentioned in previous videos, we really wanted these photos to feel like stills from a movie, so I'm going to crop the image wide. Now, there are a handful of different aspect ratios used in films. I like 2.4 to 1 a lot, which is 12 by 5 here in Lightroom. Tap L twice to dim the lights and take a look. I like it a lot, but I want to get a little bit more of their surroundings, so I'm going to use 16x9 for this shot. Okay, I like the edit for this Hasselblad photo, and now let's take a look at the Canon 5D Mark IV equivalent of the shot. My initial thought is that it holds up extremely well when comparing it to the X1D shot. I think the colors look richer, and the highlight detail looks better on the Hasselblad, but the Mark IV is obviously still an amazing camera. We can copy all of the edits we just did and paste it onto the Mark IV shot. And while not horrible, it's certainly not what we're aiming for. So I'll do a separate edit for this one. The only thing I'll copy over from the X1D edit is the tone curve. 
I'll go ahead and straighten out the shot just like before and adjust the shadows and highlights. Now down in the camera calibration section, I'm going to bring the shadows back toward green to negative 28. I still want that muted look, so I'll make a few more tweaks to get it looking pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna raise the exposure up 0.45 and bring the contrast down to negative 20. Finally, I'll crop it similarly to the Hasselblad photo using 16 by nine ratio and cool the temperature down to about 5,000. All right, now I think these two photos match really well and we can make a preset for each camera to edit the rest of these photos. So for this shoot in particular, we wanted to keep it really simple and have less contrast than our usual editing style. Take a look at these photos and let us know how you think the 5D did compared to the X1D. We hope you enjoyed the series of watching us put together a shoot from start to finish. Hopefully this gave you some insight into our process and will inspire you to get out there and put together a shoot of your own. Hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you aren't already and we'll see you next time. Say bye. Dab that like button.